Five bikers suddenly approached Ron, a 91-year-old veteran, as he was strolling to the diner. They harassed him and made fun of him, refusing to let him go. However, when he made a phone call, they turned pale that fateful evening as Ron was walking down his street toward the local diner. He had no idea just how eventful this evening was about to become. As he walked leisurely, he breathed in the cool air, reveling in its clean and pure freshness. The loud revving of motorcycles, however abruptly disturbed the calm atmosphere, he turned at once, and to his shock, he saw five bikes driving towards him. They were moving at top speed. The bikers revved their engines continuously as they sped towards the old man. Before Ron could do anything, they sped past him. They were so close to him that he could feel the heavy gust of wind that blew past them. It was so terrifying that he stood still for a few seconds, unable to say even a single word. He had assumed the bikers would keep driving, but he was wrong. They only drove on for a few seconds before they stopped and did a reverse. Then with another loud revving of their engines, they sped towards Ron once again. This time around, they didn't drive past him. They kept circling him with their bikes, revving their bikes loudly until he had to cover his ears to block out the deafening roar as they circled him over and over. They taunted him and laughed at him. They mocked him for not being able to do anything to stop them, and they insulted him over and over again. Eventually, they all stopped their bikes and approached Ron on foot. They flanked him so that he wouldn't be able to get past them when he tried to push through them. They blocked his path and called his attempts to get away pathetic. Two of them grabbed him and held him in place while one of them, Linus, searched through his pockets. With each of Ron's pockets that Linus searched, his frown deepened. Linus stared at Ron with fury. There was no wallet or money on him. The biker couldn't comprehend how someone could comfortably walk around without even a cent in their pocket. However, Ron had been doing just that and had no problem with it. Linus demanded to know where he was going, and after a brief hesitation, Ron decided to tell the truth. He was on his way to the diner. At this, they laughed at him and called him a beggar. They were sure that, since he had no money, he was only going there to beg for food. They called him all sorts of names and told him to take them to the restaurant. They said that he was going to beg for them as well. That was the only way they would leave him alone. If he refused, they would make sure he regretted it true to their word. They stayed with him for the rest of the trip to the diner. While he walked, they rode their bikes beside him, keeping close to him, as if he could outrun them if they strayed too far away. Every few minutes, Linus mocked Ron and called him a beggar. After a while, the old man got fed up with the name-calling and retorted that he wasn't a beggar. He told them that he wasn't going to the diner to beg but to have a meal. Like everyone else at that, they all burst into laughter. They laughed so hard that it was a bit difficult for them to keep their bikes balanced as they kept moving. They knew he had no money, so they asked him how he hoped to pay for what he was going to eat, but he didn't respond. They called him a lonely old man who had been abandoned by his children and would rot away with no one caring what happened to him. Listening to their toxic words, Ron could see that they were only looking to rile him up, and he didn't want that. The last thing he wanted was to give the bikers the satisfaction of seeing that they had gotten under his skin. When they got to the diner, things only got worse. They had listened intently to Ron make his order, and with every word he said, they mocked him. Their voices were loud and they were disturbing other customers. If anyone complained, the bikers threatened to deal with them and told them to mind their business if they didn't want the same fate to be brought upon them. Linus and his gang were a nuisance, and it looked like they were having the time of their life. Everything was pissing Ron off a great deal. For the first time since he left the army, he had found a set of people who were genuinely annoying. Ron had spent most of his life in the community. He was born to one of the richest couples in the community at the time, and he was one of the most privileged kids. He could have anything he wanted. However, Ron never allowed any of that to get into his head. He never felt like he was bigger or better than his peers. He enjoyed playing with other children, and he was always quick to share his toys and his cake during lunch at school. He loved to help people. Even at a young age, he was always ready to give it to someone else who needed it. That was just how selfless Ron had always been. Shortly after high school, he enrolled in the army to serve his country. It was a career that opened his eyes to the world out there and showed him just how much people were suffering. He was a soldier for 10 years before an injury forced him into early retirement. 
When he returned to his community, he took over his father's company and expanded it to a global standard. He got married and had kids of his own. They had a life even more privileged than the one he had gotten as an adult, with responsibilities. He became even more committed to being charitable. He regularly awarded scholarships to intelligent students in the community, promising to pay their tuition as long as they excelled in their studies. Regardless of how far they pursued their academic achievements, thanks to his selfless attitude, he saw many people through high school and college. Numerous individuals in the community owed their success to him, and they were always happy to share his impact with anyone who cared to listen. He was also instrumental in building the community's economy. Money he helped set up businesses for those interested and provided interest-free loans with generous repayment deadlines that would have bankrupted any conventional lender. Although he would have preferred to give the money for free, he understood that the obligation to repay the loan motivated people to work hard and ensure their businesses succeeded. The relaxed deadlines were intended to prevent them from feeling pressured and making grave mistakes. Ron was loved by everyone. By the time his children were adults and ready to take over the conglomerate so that he could peacefully retire, at least two out of every five people in the community had been positively impacted by him. They all admired him and were willing to do anything for him. The hospital where Ron received his regular medical checkups provided their services for free. The diner gave him free food, regardless of how expensive his order was or how many times he ate. In a day when he lost his dear wife, the entire community went into mourning, and many businesses closed for a few days to grieve with him. That was how much Ron was loved at a time when he feared being alone. He found himself surrounded by an entire community willing to take good care of him. Ron lived his life with ease, counting down the days until he could join his dear wife. He always had a smile for everyone he met, as he was a sweet soul with no one bearing ill intentions toward him. This included the biker gangs that resided on the outskirts of the community. While they preferred to keep to themselves, they didn't cause trouble or commit crimes, and they were even known to help people in tight spots. This is why it came as such a shock to Ron and the other diners when five bikers from the same group began harassing and mocking the old man. It was the first time something like this had happened, and everyone was saddened that the bikers had targeted the kindest man in the community. Soon Ron's meal was brought to the table, but Linus immediately grabbed it from the waiter and held it out of his reach. He told Ron that the only way he could get his meal was if he placed an order for him and his friends as well. The waitress tried to get the food back from him, but he pushed her away with his free hand and warned her to mind her business. He told her to leave them alone or he and his friends would burn down the diner. He then went on to say that he could easily do it and that no one would do a single thing about it. At that point, Ron decided he had had enough of Lanus and his goons. He was determined to put a stop to their antics. He pulled out his phone and dialed the number. The bikers watched him and laughed, assuming he was calling the police. They taunted him, saying it was a futile effort. Linus claimed they had friends who were officers and could easily get them out of jail. He then threatened that, once they were released, they would return to make Ron pay. Ron ignored them, though none of their threats or taunts had any effect on him. He simply made his call. He said a few words, keeping his voice low so that they didn't hear what he was saying. When he was done, he dropped the phone on the table, and Lena's eyes fell on the screen. He saw the name of the contact, and he immediately went pale. He was visibly shaken as he couldn't tear his eyes from the phone. The other bikers noticed his discomfort and demanded to know what was wrong with him. When he couldn't say a word, they simply picked up the phone and checked it out themselves. And they also went pale as they saw the name written in bold letters. Ron had called the mayor. They couldn't believe that an old man like him could have contact with someone as sophisticated and protected as the mayor, convinced it was just a trick to scare them, they decided they wouldn't be intimidated so easily. However, with each passing minute, the bikers grew increasingly uneasy. They realized how little they knew about Ron and began to reconsider their assumptions. If Ron did have a connection to the mayor, they could be in serious trouble. Just as they started contemplating leaving the diner, the air was suddenly filled with the loud wail of sirens and the flashing of light. Two police cars pulled up and armed officers jumped out with their weapons ready. Two officers walked into the diner, while another two stayed outside to cover the exits. 
The bikers stared at the officers, then glanced back at Ron, who remained calmly seated. They looked at the officers again before bursting into laughter, clutching their bellies and pointing at Ron in mockery. The cops who had entered the diner were their friends, the very ones they had boasted about to Ron. However, their laughter began to fade as they noticed their friends weren't sharing in the humor. Instead, the officers wore serious and sad expressions. Before the bikers could comprehend what was happening, the officers pulled out handcuffs and began arresting them. Linus stared at the officers in shock, unable to believe his friends had turned against him. One of the officers explained that they hadn't betrayed him, but were following orders from the chief of police, who had received directives from the mayor himself. The order for their arrest had come from the highest authority. The shocked bikers couldn't take their eyes off Ron, who remained seated with a sly smile tugging at his lips. It was then that they realized they had messed with the wrong person. Ron's connection to the mayor and his quiet influence had brought swift justice upon them, leaving the bikers to understand the true extent of Ron's reach and the gravity of their mistake. Linus demanded to know how Ron had managed to pull off such a move, but the old man ignored him. Instead, one of the officers revealed the shocking truth. He explained that Ron was considered a hero in the community, and by messing with him, Linus had effectively messed with everyone. However, that was only a small part of it. As it turned out, the mayor was one of the beneficiaries of Ron's numerous scholarships. The mayor had come from a poor family, and Ron had single-handedly seen him through the high school and college. Ron had also been really helpful in providing his campaign funds when he was running for office. As a result, the mayor held him in high esteem, and he was just like a family member. No one was allowed to mess with him. The chief of police wasn't left out. Either Ron had been instrumental in supporting him through his years at the police academy. However, the worst revelation for Linus and his friends came when it was disclosed that even the leader of the biker gang had been a recipient of Ron's goodwill. Ron had helped him establish a mechanic workshop, which had eventually led to the formation of the biker gang. At that moment, Linus realized just how deep in trouble they were as they were being led to the police cars both the mayor and the gang leader arrived in their respective convoys. They were informed that severe punishment awaited them for their actions against Ron. Seeing the powerful figures who had come to Ron's aid, Linus understood the extent of the old man's influence and the magnitude of their mistake. The community's respect and affection for Ron meant that any harm done to him would not be tolerated and the repercussions would be severe. As they were loaded into the car, one of the cops asked Linus why they had done such a horrible thing, and all they could say was that they had no idea Ron was that powerful. They had only just joined the gang for a few days, and they were itching to make their mark. They came from a neighboring community and had been eager to begin terrorizing people. The leader of the gang had warned them that such a lifestyle wasn't welcome in their gang, and they had refused to listen, eager to intimidate and oppress. They went after someone they felt they could oppress and get away with. That night, both the mayor and the leader of the gang apologized profusely to Ron for what had happened. He told them that they didn't have to do that. After all, it wasn't their fault that Linus and his friends had done such a despicable act. He simply thanked them for coming to his rescue right on time and told them to make sure that the rogue bikers were punished to the fullest extent. Things unfolded just as Ron had hoped. The rogue bikers were taken to court and eventually sentenced to several weeks in prison. Additionally, they were forbidden from coming within a hundred yards of Ron or the diner. The biker gang also imposed its own punishment. The offenders were permanently banned from the gang in the community. They were warned that if they dared to set foot in the community after serving their time, they would face a far worse kind of harassment than what they had inflicted on Ron. In the end, the rogue bikers got what they deserved and the community returned to its peaceful and serene state, Ron could resume his evening strolls to the diner without fear of harassment from bikers. Everyone was happy once again, but Ron was the happiest of all. <laughs> what do you think about the way the bikers were dealt with? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. See you in the next video.